Hello and welcome back to this episode of Trails from Zero with me, SLJRPG. In the last episode, we did some monster hunting and then also found ourselves in the middle of a squabble between two factions here in the old districts, between the Testaments and the Sapa Vibers. And it is now our mission to go view what each one of these has to say. So, I think without any further ado, let's make our way over to the Snape Vipers first. You guys! Those clothes. Is this place supposed to be the Saber Vipers home base? Ignis. I believe this was once a warehouse, now remodeled into a venue. They do not pay taxes, so I am unaware of the specifics. Don't ignore me! I may be a rookie, but I'm still a proud member. I'm oh, sorry about that. We were hoping to have a discussion with your boss. Do you think you could let us in? You want to see Wald? There's no way a bunch of dogs could ever dream of meeting him. Feel free to get the hell out of here. He's dead set and not letting us in. Probably not a good eye for, idea for us to bust in either. Want to check up on the other gang first? Sounds like a good idea to me. We can return here afterwards. There we go. There is a chest symbol here. I have no idea what this means. But there we go. So... Trinity Bar is where we need to go first. So let's make our way in. A billiard stable? Oh, nice. They got Paul here. This is me one of them so called billiards clubs. Looks pretty interesting to me. Trinity is a legitimate operation in possession of a business permit. We better get a good look at Testament's base of operations. What do you want? What business do you have with us? Mm. The big dude. Wait, you're... Those police dogs! Mm. Thank you for cooperating with us earlier. The sign said you were open, so I figured I'll come by and have a friendly chat. Have you no shame? What you th want with us? You better have a good reason for being here. We'll continue where we left off and settle it once and for all. Settle down. Abbas. Why are you stopping us? Don't forget that it's our holy ground. Cease your petty arguments. Where are your orders, Swazi? Let's see. I don't see any harm in letting them stay. Understood. Hmm. Thanks. What's the matter with these people? Do they worship the ground he walks on or something? Hmm. He's the leader of a cult, undeniably. Well, why are you here? Don't. Didn't I tell you already? I haven't anything to say to a bunch of dogs. Just because you don't have anything to say to us doesn't mean the opposite holds true. We'd appreciate it if you could cooperate with us in this investigation. An investigation? Well, I'm going to cut you off and tell you that I don't plan on settling our differences with the Vipers, if that's your request. The residents may be bothered by our disputes, but that's not our problem. They'll just have to deal with it until it's over. Mmm. We're not here to stop your dispute with the Vipers. We want to know what prompted this desire to wipe each other out. What specific reason do you have? Oh? That's... Silence, let Maisie handle this. Sorry. Considering your reactions, there's definitely more to the story than meets the eye. Care to share details with us? Well, what could you hope to accomplish? If you embrace us, that'd be one thing. But police, very unlikely. Don't tell me you guys plan on helping us bunch our... Helping out a bunch of ruffians. I'll admit the police may have been neglect and negligent when it comes to downtown district. And you're not wrong. Knowing details doesn't necessarily mean we'll be able to help you out. However, our obje objectives don't fall in line with the Bracer Guild. They place safety of citizens above all else. What are you saying? Wait a minute, Lloyd. Come on, you don't get it, do you? Do you honestly think I'll graciously provide you with information and nothing in return? Has no one taught you the concept of give and take? That's where you're wrong. You're the one implying that I have nothing to give in return. Oh? If any detective's duty to shine a light on secrets surrounded deep within the darkness. At least that's what I learned growing up. If you happen to be holding any doubts about this situation, then it will help you uncover the truth, no matter what. This is what I can provide you in return. Ah. Impressive speech, pal. <laughs> <laughs> Wazzy doesn't seem to like us too much. 
Fantastic, absolutely fantastic. An overly dramatic speech of that caliber is a rarity these days. You're Lloyd Wright. Man, I like you. I wasn't saying that to impress you. Anyway, are you willing to share? I'd like to learn your motive behind wanting to annihilate the Saber Vipers. Alright, fine. Be rude of me to die you a sincerity after delivering such a gut-busting speech. Abbas, if you would please. Understood. I have yet to introduce myself. My name is Abbas. I am a member of the Testaments. Oh, pleased to meet you. He's huge. Just who is he? The incident responsible for our dispute occurred five nights ago. One of the members was ambushed by the Vipers in a nearby alleyway. Ambushed? Would you say that it wasn't just a normal, everyday fight? How could it be a normal fight? He took a heavy blow to the back of his head and was beaten up by a group of guys well after he lost consciousness. The whole thing was one-sided from start to finish. They beat him so bad he was sent to the hospital. Damn, no mercy at all, eh? So, how's the victim doing now? According to the latest parts from the hospital, he's yet to regain consciousness. The doctor finished treating his wounds, but he did suffer a heavy blow to his head. We're currently waiting for any further updates from the hospital. I see. Excuse me, did you attempt to contact the police at any point? Why would you do that? They're unlikely to offer any assistance. Regardless, the call board is already obvious. Calling the police will only serve to interfere with our plans to enact revenge. Oh. Would, I would like to ask a question. If the victim is yet to gain consciousness, to what degree of certainty can you claim the Saber Vipers are the culprits then? Hmm. Hey, she's right. Don't tell me you guys are determined that you're using your own biased deductions. Well, as if we're that stupid. Unlike those meteors, we're actually fairly intelligent. Though I suppose you might find that hard to believe. Where is he? We got good reason to be damn sure they're the culprits. I'm sure you got it all figured out too. Care to tell us your answer, Mr. Detective? Well... Hmm. Both the groups were con were coordinated outfits, including footwear. Were you able to discern the identity based on the footprints left to the scene of the crime? Pretty interesting take. The road down there is comprised mostly of old stones, so footprints aren't clearly visible. Moreover, the vipers pass by there often enough that their presence of their footprints fails to implicate them in the crime. Oh, really? Our deciding factor would be the type of wound inflicted on him. Most injuries were bumps and bruises, but there are a few lacerations. The weapon used to have been both blunt and serrated. The wounds from the blunt weapon accompanied with lacerations from a sharp weapon. Oh. Gotcha. You figure it was done by a nail bat, like the one we saw them using earlier. The wounds inflicted on him could certainly serve as decisive pieces of evidence. Hmm. Okay, I've written down everything I think I need. This information should, be should prove useful in our investigation. No problem. Are you fine with just this, though? You're not going to beg me to not to, not to exact my revenge? Although I see a lot of you to so refrain from carrying out your plans against the Vipers. But I still don't have enough information come to, a, to come to a conclusion yet. We need to set, pay the Vipers a visit and hear their side of the story first. If we learn anything new, we'll let you know. Makes sense. Look like you're dead set on carrying on this little investigation of yours, Mr. Detective. I suppose I should wait in anticipation for you to return with interesting information. And don't forget, if your investigation fails, this district will be engulfed in a bloodbath. I'll keep that in mind. Be sure to bring back information that won't leave you disappointed. So we got that one wrong. I felt like Footprints was a good one. Azil was the guy who was. Don't get so full of yourselves, you incompetent cops. Hmm. We wonder why. We should leave immediately. Okay. Yes. yes. Right. So, to the Saber Vipers, we must go. Let us go forward. Ooh. Little boy. A lot of noise coming from the next street over. Let's try a piece again. You again. We already told you. Wald's not going to talk to a bunch of dogs. Get the hell out of here. This might end up being a bit of a problem. Gotta admit, for a delinquent, he's got a cute eye. He's a cute, bright eyed kid. <clears throat> Hello, may I have your name, please? 
Me? I'm Dino. Dino, is it? You're tasked with keeping watch in case suspicious individuals try to enter, right, Dino? That's right. Well, personally, assigned this job to me. So I don't... I can't have any of those testament jerks breaking in here. Definitely wasn't forced into this post by other members. Of course not. It's a very important job. But we are members of the testaments. There shouldn't be any problems if you let us in, correct? But... So you're messing with the rest of our guys earlier if I let you in. Yes, we may have engaged in combat with them. But a spa that small is basically a greeting to your men, right? Besides, your boss has already long moved on from the issue. But... Mm, if you aren't willing to trust us, then... What? Wait, Ellie? Here, take it. You can hold on to my pistol while we go inside. This is incredibly precious to me. I hope you'll take good care of it until I return. <sighs> Fine, stop it already. You don't have to take it this far. Go and ask Wall if you can enter. You better not sneak in while I'm gone. <laughs> there we go. Damn, that was a ballsy move. I was utterly frightened for a moment. That was impressive, Ellie. Don't think I'd be able to pull off a negotiation like that. I'm quite familiar with these situations, so feel free to rely on me. Don't think I can approach. That approach would work on someone like Wald, though. You better off speaking to him in a similar manner as you did with Wazi. Yeah, I know. Thanks. Wald gave a key for you to enter. I'll let you in, but if I catch you trying to pull any funny business, you're finished. Thank you. If you'll excuse us, then. Okay, into the venue we go. This place is far too noisy. You're right, they're turning it into a music venue. Damn, they actually turned this dusty old building into a hangout spot? I'm impressed. It's about damn time. You sure got some stones showing your faces here. Can't believe you guys actually showed up. You got a dash wish or th dash death wish or something. My voice has gone a bit weird today, guys. Apologies. Hmm. <laughs> Looks like those blue bastards told you most of the details already. What are you here for then? Gonna arrest us? Not at all. We're hoping to, to ask for your cooperation in our investigation. If you don't mind, what exactly do you? Why exactly do you want to destroy the testaments? We've heard their side of the story. We'd like to hear yours now. <clears throat> why? Is the testament station not sufficient enough to explain their feud? No, not at all. Of course it's not. It, it's many explains that something happened, not reasons why. No, it's not. The truth can easily change depending on who you talk to and what they claim they saw. The actual truth can only be brought to light once everyone's account has been thoroughly cross-examined and scrutinized. Doing so is one of my duties as a detective. Now I got gotcha. you. So essentially, you need to analyze the case from various angles, correct? Weirdo. <laughs> You're a weirdo, that's for sure. Wouldn't make things a hell of a lot easier just to assume we're the baddies. Walt. Listen up, punk ass detective. Even I did have the info you're looking for, and was willing to give it up. What's in it for me? Well, I'm guessing you won't be satisfied with just learning the truth. Well, hell no, I won't. Seeing, I'm the kind of guy who loses off his ass off kicking asses and taking names. How about this? If you call down my bloodlust right here, right now, I'll spill the beans. Hmm. <laughs> Let's have ourselves a little brawl. My gang versus yours. Kick our asses and you get the info you need. Not bad deal, right? Absolutely not. Self-defense is a different story, but we'll be participating in meaningless fights. It's out of the question. Don't be no need to be such a killjoy, kid. If you're that afraid of getting pummeled, how about you just leave the two ladies here instead? <sighs> They're underage. One of them's underage. You're pushing your luck. For real, boss? Isn't that kind of scummy? Shut up, morons. What's the big deal? Just leave him with us the next two arrows while the two of you go on a little walk. Do it and I'll tell you everything. Sound good? <clears throat> Actually, I have a better idea. Me and you, one on one. There shouldn't be anything wrong with a, f a friendly scrimmage. If I win, you tell me everything you know about the case. Is that good enough for you? <laughs> Wait. Damn, dude. A reckless idea, I must say. You out of your goddamn mind? Right over there. Looks like you'd stand a chance, but you? You look like a twig compared to me. As I said, I'm a detective. Be been through some pretty intense training. I doubt I'll lose some two-bit street delinquent like you. <laughs> mm. 
Mm. Didn't think there'd be another guy stupid enough to challenge me to a fight. Sure, kid, I'll accept. I'm Wald Wales, the Demon Smasher, and leader of the Saber Vipers. If you think you can take me down, then show me what you got. Okay, we're gonna have to be careful about this. We do have an S break here. We're gonna do a tiger charge, why not? Maybe we should have saved it. He resists whatever that is. That's fine. We're gonna do a crest. Because whilst our defense has gone up, that's pretty good. Let's use our tear bomb here. And then now we can go in the offense. Oh, oh. Staying alive. <laughs> Is that a, uh, a new move for us? Sorry, we're just going to attack regularly. 52. Okay, so we really do have to rely on the S-breaks, I think. Oof, okay, not fun. We'll do the crest again. We're healing is the best possibility. Ogre slash. Even with that, it's not too bad. We'll do another tier bomb here. Nice, nice, nice. Let's just attack normally. As we got the S-Craft now. Counter. Nice. We can take one more attack of whatever it is. Neck hang is going to be annoying. But let's heal up next after this. Use the tear bomb. Nicely done. Ogre slash. Takes our movement down, but we're not actually too worried about that. Let's use the assess break now. As we take out a very big, decent amount. Missed, and we get a counter. Nicely done. <laughs> Not bad, kid. Would have been nicer if you would have gone at it for real, but... My showdown with the bo pretty boy is almost here, so let I'll let you off the hook this time. How far to love you. So, mind filling us in on the details of the incident now? Sure, whatever. It all happened five nights ago. One of my boys was ambushed by one of those blue bastards. They happened not too far away from Ignis, too. Huh? Did it? Well, those cowards claimed the sim of their own was attacked in the same way. Cause there's something they put out of their asses. As Sabervitus like to throw down, but we fight like men. You really think we'll bitch out and join someone in the dark? Hmm. What were the extent of your follower's injuries? Been to his bones, started with a fracture. He's in the hospital now. Said it'll be a month or two till he's fully recovered. And like the blue bastard, he didn't pass out right after the pummeling started. Took a hell of a lot worse beating than him, that's for sure. I see. You guys definitely sure the testaments are the perps? You said you didn't pass out immediately, right? Can you give us a statement? Huh? Did he even see his attackers at all? Guess not. But it's definitely those blue bastards, I'll bet my life in it. After all, he was sniped by one of their rocks. A rock? Are you referring to the stones they launched from their slingshots? Damn right I am. The shot knocked the wind out of him. So the coward took a chance to rush in and kick his ass. He hung on for a bit, but not for long. This is an obvious of the culprit now. Well, that's all I gotta tell you. 
said it before and I'll say it again. I couldn't care less about the little details. I'm gonna put an end to him and his blue bastards. Nothing else matters at this point. Wanna interfere? Be my guest. In the end, I'm gonna crush everyone who gets in my way. You made your point. Thanks for your cooperation. I'm sure your statement will be key in solving the case. We'll contact you if we discover any new leads. Knock yourself out, kid. Interesting. Uh, we should have a look see around here first. Bring him a world of hurt. Nothing else really to be seen in there. But we are deep in the mystery. I'm confused about something. Members of both groups were assaulted. Is it possible they were being untruthful? I suspect they were. I do suspect they were lying, though. Hmm. Is something the matter? Feeling the effects of the fight or something? No, that's not it. I'm fine, he was going easy on me. Thinking something doesn't add up. How so? Well, five nights ago, members of both groups were assaulted at the same time, but in different locations, even if they had coincidentally attacked each other simultaneously. With that many people involved, how likely would it be for them to be oblivious of, the others, of each other's movements? Oh, no kidding. Neither of them are pros of covert operations, so no chances of that are for slim as hell. What if one group was ambushed and the reality retaliated in kind? That wouldn't explain either. They would have taken precautionary measures toward facing retaliation from the enemy. Not to mention, both sides had supposedly been ambushed. Isn't that right, Lloyd? Yeah, there's definitely something going on behind the scenes. We're still missing the most critical piece of, piece of this puzzle. Looks like you guys could use a hand. Oh, it's aren't you from Crossbell Times? Howdy, we meet again. Cha Ching, just got myself a money shot. Oh, this is an infringement of our right to privacy. I can't help it, take pictures for as long as I have, and you can develop some mind of its own. Who knows? Maybe I'll feature you in my next article. You guys should take take what you can get. I don't think it works that way. Do you intend to make a mockery of us again? What can I say? You guys seem a, to be a hit with the readers. More importantly, I can see you managed to track some juicy information about out of those hoodlums. I've been conducting my little investigation on my own. So how about it? Care to share the goods with your friends here? And take you out for a nice meal in return? As thanks for the lovely reference material you've been giving me, my treat. Gah. What makes you think we'll be willing to share classified information with a civilian? Let alone a member of the media. Oh, Fooey, don't sweat the details. And here I was, thinking I could treat everyone to some great Eastern cuisine. I offer you a critical piece of the puzzle for dessert. <clears throat> so that's what you're playing at. Trying to reel us in the old give and take. Bingo! I'll be at Long Lao Tavern in Inn near the East Street. Don't be shy now. I'll hit there first and drink all by my lonesome until you arrive. Oh, come to think of it, I haven't introduced myself yet, have I? I'm Grace Lynn, reporter for Crosswell Times. Think of me as an old sister you never had. Or never wanted. <laughs> hmm. Grace Lynn, a reporter from Crosswell Times. Her offer sounds shady, but damn, this one fine carrot dangling from her stick. Might be worth seeing what her deal is. Yeah. I'd like to hear what information she has to offer, but I'm not interested in a bribery attempt. We can't rely on headquarters to assist us. Should we take any help we can get for the investigation? I'd imagine her curiosity as a reporter has led to her research the matter extensively. We'd best be careful to not let sensitive information slip from our mouths. I agree. She gave off the impression she was ready to pounce the moment any moment of any of us slipped. Talk about a harsh assessment. There we go. So there's some things we need to be doing. So, she wants us to go to the Long Lao Tavern here in East Street. But I'm going to go heal myself first, and then I'll see you guys back here. Apparently I'm not allowed to leave. So we're going to go back. <laughs> uh, we want to rest. How much does it cost? Ugh!
Uh, we're gonna buy a long, long Mao Tantan men because if we can learn that for old Lloydy boy here, it's probably not a bad idea. Nicely done. Right. Let's speak to Grace Lynn. I knew you'd become crawling. Don't be shy now. Have a seat. I'll treat you all to a nice dinner. Well, that's something kind of you. Well, I've respectfully declined their dinner. How about we stick to exchanging information? Boo, you're no fun. Are you trying to make a statement that you're impervious to bribes, unlike the upper echelons of the CPD? Of course. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. I'll gladly scope out a free meal, ma'am. I will also accept, so long as you are not scheming to make us owe you. It's probably okay. I don't see the harm in sharing casual meal. Ugh. You're the only one worried about some kind of moral conflict? How are you going to become a pro-detective if you act like such a prude all the time? I get it already. Forbidding you all from drinking, as long as you abide by this rule, we'll accept your offer. Good luck telling Randy not to drink. That's all I'm going to say. This is delectable. The chef here is highly skilled. This food is most satisfying. Though it's kind of hard to savor something this tasty without a good drink. Come on, Lloyd. Don't be such a hard ass. One sip ain't gonna kill me, you know. Absolutely not. You know we're still technically on duty, right? We have to keep our wits about us at all times. Yeah, yeah, whatever. I'll eat as stubborn as a damn mule. On the contrary, Randy, are you not one who is far too nonchalant? I'm going to have to agree with them. Drinking on the job is highly inappropriate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you guys are so much fun. Your personalities are wildly different, yet you fit together perfectly. Almost like a jigsaw puzzle. Heck, you're basically a well-oiled machine now. Flatty will get you nowhere. Back to the topic at hand. We told you everything we know about the incident that occurred in downtown. I recall you mentioning you had a missing piece of the puzzle earlier. Isn't about time you filled us in on it. And what if I told you I don't wanna? Good luck getting us to trust you again, Grace. Not only that, but it'll be the last time we ever talk. Ever. <laughs> oh, calm down. I was just messing with you. Though I gotta say, you can be pretty charming when you're serious. It's a nice contrast to your boyish looks. Hate to admit it, but you've caught my attention. Okay, how about we get back to work? Yes, that sounds fine by me. I appreciate the meal. Whoa, hold your horses, people. You want the missing piece of the puzzle, right? Where do I begin? Okay, have you guys ever heard of a group named Revanche? Oh, I've heard the name. What's with the blank look in your faces? Revanche and Co. I believe there's a business in Crossbow registered under that name. That appears that they all appear to be on a quick surface level examination. True for the matter is they're actually Crossbow's math here. They've been controlling our dark underworld for a long time. Of course. By Mafia, do you mean that they're a criminal organization? Makes sense. I've definitely heard rumors about being a Mafia in Crossbell. I'm guessing you already know a thing or two about that, Lloyd. I do. It's pretty hard to be dark about them if you're a Crossbellian. Their organization has a vast network of connections with important people. I've heard they've got strong deep ties within the government, so the police can't take any actions against them. Interesting. The underbelly of society is pretty much identical no matter where you go, eh? So, what's the mention of Revanche? Are they involved? Oh, you betcha. Revanche members have been engaged in some rather shady business lately. They've been working their behinds off, almost if they're anxious to complete some kind of plan. So, they, being the investigation guru I am, I've decided to spend some time sinking my teeth into this potential scoop. What do you mean by the Mafia working harder than usual? This certainly sounds ominous. I have a terrible feeling about this. This is why you decide to visit downtown district then? What? Bingo! About two weeks ago, one of my sources proved me with some intel on members of the Mafia snooping around downtown. They were dressed like civilians, probably trying to conceal their identities. Doesn't that smell awfully fishy to you? They want to buy the bar and the venue. It reeks. 
Agreed, something falls out of place. It's unlikely that each gang would simultaneously and independently choose to attack one another. Revenge orchestrating things from the shadows would explain how that happened. I'm confused about something though. For what reasons does a criminal organization require delinquent groups to antagonize each other? Right, that's the million mirror question. It makes sense that they'll harbor a grudge against one another. Well, as far as I know, they don't have a rocky relationship, but I've never heard of any serious conflicts between them. Quite frankly, all three groups are savages. Those Matthew dudes are way more threatening than the others do. The weirdest part is, Revanche doesn't have any conflicts of interest with the other two groups. Don't see the need for them to be fighting. What if one of them formed an alliance with the Mafia to off their rival once and for all? Going by this assumption, exact, not exactly surprising that the culprits would play the role of the victim. But do they really need to take it that far? I don't get the impression that Wazi and Waller are on bad terms, were on bad terms with each other. If anything, I felt like they held each other in high regard. That's what I was going to say. What I've gathered, Wazi and Wilder are rivals, but they hold a mutual respect for one another. So at first, Wilder and the Saber Riders were the only gang in downtown. But then that all changed two years ago, and Wazi showed up out of nowhere and established the Testaments. And we all know how Wald is, but he obviously went to go put Wazi in his place, but uh, Wazi took him down? Yeppers, sure he did. Despite his charming looks and small frame, Wazi's a skilled martial artist. I've heard he managed to take Wald by surprise by lightning quick moves and pinned him to the ground. Wow, I was not expecting that. I was. <laughs> the cute dude, little dude's freakishly strong, color me surprised. No kidding, but I don't think Wald's no pushover there either. He was a little too careless that one time. They fought a number of times since. They're at a stalemate, supposedly. I think precisely why they respect each other there. That makes perfect sense. I can see why they consider each other rivals. Suppose that rules any likelihood of either of them formed an alliance with the Mathia to crush out each other. Agreed. They're both worshipped by their respective gangs, so without their subordinates, we're acting independently. Hmm. This can only mean one thing. Mm hmm. I may have divulged a little more information than I should have. Huh? Anyway, I've got other interviews to conduct. I'm going to take off. Kick some butt without investigation so I can write me a good story later. Toodles! Race is interesting. She sure has an interesting way of handling things. But regardless, we're able to obtain some highly valuable information. Yeah, knowing the matter is likely involved with this mess is a huge leap forward in our investigation. Now, the real question is, why did the Mafia get themselves involved in their affairs? It's going to be a tough one to figure out with the limited evidence we have right now. The police database does not appear to have any relevant information either. I believe it's like behind multiple levels of authorization. So it's classified info, eh? It makes sense considering what those news pockets the Mafia has their hands in. Hmm. Alright, let's head back to the SSS and see what Chief Sergei has to say about everything. As much as I love it for us to solve the case, the situation is starting to become larger than what we can handle. You're right. Yeah, let's head back and see what the old man has to say for himself. Okay. Mr. Sergei. We are coming to see you. Ooh, there's a walking function. I was unaware, I believe. This is the best way. For us to get there. Oh, it's the Harbour District. My bad, not not the best way, evidently, but we can go this way. As we can see, Crossbell News Service. Administrative District. I'm going in circles, guys. <laughs> this is the best way to go. You can up. Let's head back down. See what Mr. Sergei has to say. Let's check the screen as well, just in case. We've got that one checked out, but Mr. Sergei will be in his room. Oh, you're back. Managed to stop them? Well, about that, Chief. We think the situation might be a bit more complicated than you expected. Huh? Explain everything that happened and laid out the facts. Hmm, interesting. Ugh. Chief? Alright. You can handle this as you fit. Excuse me? What do you mean by that? 
Whether you're willing to continue with the investigation is entirely up to you. But you won't be getting any more information regarding revenge out of me. You have to dig for it on your own. But it doesn't make any sense. I told you to stop the investigation. Would you follow orders? What? If the Matthew really is involved in this, things are only going to get nastier. As your supervisor, the most logical step is to order you to close the case immediately. Now, is that what you want me to do? No. If I gave up now, I'm pretty sure we'll regret it down the road. Especially after coming this far. I agree. Alright then. Dad will be able to rest easy knowing you kids are getting beaten up by the Mafia. So I'll do your favor and introduce you to a trusty consultant of mine. A consultant? Sergei handed a business card to Lloyd. Grimwood Law Office. Something about that rings a bell. It's a law office located on West Street. It's run by a bitter lawyer named Ian. Oh, near the bakery, right? I definitely ran across him a couple of times when I used to live in the area. I've heard of him too. Mr. Grimwood provides consulting services to, corporates, to corporations and other businesses, right? He also frequently offers legal consultations to ordinary citizens, I believe. Spot on, because that box bearded, be box bearded build, he looks like a genuine bear. Beautiful and often referred to him as Grizzly Grim. Probably he's uh, loads of the info on the Mafia. Who knows? He might have new intel that the CPD doesn't even know. Really? It's quite impressive. Just what kind of lawyer is this guy? You'll find out when you meet him. Spoken to him previously about the SSS related matters. He'll just let you finish explaining why you're there if you tell him who you are. This is the perfect opportunity for a little meet and greet. Well, we'll get on it. West Street is just around the corner. Everyone okay with paying this law office a visit? Of course. Should we head out? Hmm. Once again, checking, just in case. I am so, uh, I've just noticed it says Bindos, uh, Bindos ZX Professional. <laughs> Not Windows, but Bindos. Uh, so, let's go to speak to Grimwood. The quickest way, I believe, is going through here. This should take us out to West Street. As once again, a box has appeared out of nowhere. Oh, the treasure chests, but we do not know how to get there. Quite yet, I'm guessing we're going to have to go via... Uh, via something, but there's another one over here. That seems a little bit more manageable. Maybe we'll try and get there at some point. But, let's make our way to Grimwood Law Office. Grimwood Law Office. I believe this is the place. Yeah, I've seen the lawyer who runs it in the neighborhood. No idea who is well known, though. Thanks for chiming me and I'll sure we'll speak again in the future. Of course, I'll be here anytime you need me. Shouldn't your division try to do something to solve the situation though? Thinking about the impact this will have on the citizens. Kissing the asses of the populace is my job, nor do I intend it on ever being. Interesting. You four are. Hmm. Come again? That's right. You're well, those pubs Sergei decided to adopt. Huh? Hold on, that badge. You work for the CPD too? Who am I? It's an important to you. Imagine you're here to speak with Ian about something. Whatever advice. Try not to waste his time. I like you useless rookies. He's a busy man. What? Hmm, who the fuck are you, man? Who are you calling a rookie for? <laughs> we are very much rookies at this point, but that's fine. What's his problem? He looked like a detective from one of the in investigative divisions. His ego was overbearing. Glasses definitely ain't a greenhorn, that's for sure. You can tell by the weapon strapped to his left hip. Seriously, I didn't even notice. You were able to notice it? I detected it with my sensors. Specialized military grade handgun, or so it seems. Sounds about right. Wow, you two are amazing. No, it was nothing. More importantly, should we not go ahead inside and greet the lawyer? All right. I kind of feel bad for bothering him if he's as busy as a man, at, man as busy as that man said. Let's go in and introduce ourselves. That seems like a good idea to me. Who is the bespectacled man? I'm sure we will come into into looks with him at some point. Forget something, detective. Oh, pardon me. I'm gonna stick you off with someone else. Welcome to Grinwood Law Office. How can I help you? Um, uh, 
No need to hold back. If you have a question, ask away. Then again, you look quite young. Do you have any questions about loans? Perhaps you're looking for potential business partners. Come now, ask me anything. No sir, it's nothing like that. This guy's got a lot of energy. So this is the famous Grizzly Grim. I see the rumors are true. Hold on. Now I've taken a closer look. Can't help but feel as though I've seen you before, young man. You're one of the kids that used to live in this neighborhood. Ah, you remember me. Yeah, right. I lived in one of the apartment complexes here about three years ago. Allow me to properly introduce myself. My name is Lloyd Bannings. You did live here? Yes, that explains why you look so familiar. Wait. Bannings? Then you're Guy Bannings, younger brother? Yeah, I am. You know my brother, then? More than just you and we... We're lovers. <laughs> Never mind. I suppose you're here to discuss something important. Come in. You can fill me in on the details once we take a seat. Oh, where are my manners? I'm Ian Grimwood, lawyer, owner of this law firm. I see. I was running when I had me the special support section Sergei was telling me about. I actually read about you in the most recent issue of Crossbell Times. Certainly showed diligence and spunk right out of the gate, didn't you? Well, I sure they sure took liberties with that article. So, Guy's younger brother is a police officer now too. How time flies. You can only assume this is Adios's will. Mr. Grimward, what sort of relationship did you have with my brother? Well, the same one you and I will have. Guy used to drop by occasionally to exchange information with me. But as, sh as I'm sure you know, he was an incredibly talented detective. The wager he helped me far more than I was able to help him. Halt, there's something we're missing here. Lloyd, your older brother is a detective? The hell, man? Why don't you tell us about him? Mm. Sorry, guys. It never really crossed my mind. Besides, Guy's not with us anymore. Huh? He was killed in the line of duty. About three years ago now. Oh. That explains why you moved away from the city for a while. My deepest and most sincere condolences. Believe it or not, I've conducted my own investigations into that particular incident. Sadly, any leads may that may exist elude me. I see. Well, let's just forget about his case for now. It's not why we're here. Mr. Grimward, I've already laid out our case to you. <laughs> Sorry guys, if you have any information pertaining to revenge and its activities, please tell us. Revenge, hmm. The Saber Group is nothing but bad news. Illegal dealings with the Empire and the Republic. Selling stolen goods, mirror laundering, weapon trafficking. Operating as middlemen for hiring Jaegers. That doesn't even come close to catching the surface of their crimes. However, no matter what sort of illegalities they've committed, the fact remains they are able to take advantage of Crossbow's very unique situation. Unique situation? What he means is, while trade and commerce have grown exponentially over the years, Crossbell's political foundation has begun to quickly deteriorate, right? Well put, Crossbellian politics are currently in an extremely fragile state. Most politicians choose to align themselves with either Erebonia or Calvert, and there are nothing more than greedy, hungry, power-hungry power leeches. There's a bit of bull circulating within that diet that cracks down on the Mafia, but that won't be approved. Too many diet members are connected to Revanche. Hmm. Are you serious? Unfortunately, he is. The number of die members is tied with to the Mafia is higher than I want to admit. This is probably the reason why the police can't touch them. Reality can be cold and cruel. Does that mean Revenge can commit any crime they want to without no repercussions? No, it hasn't got to that point yet. But if they don't control themselves, they would end up angering a majority across Bullions and surrounding nations. Therefore, Revenge has been treading a very thin line in order to avoid directly interfering with citizenry's daily lives. As long as they don't cross that line, the police can't lay a finger on them. You may wonder why they constantly look down on people. Well, that's your answer. Hmm. This can't be real. Reality ain't too pretty. Besides, city glamour's for Kate. Facade our shadows help bent on stirring up trouble. I'm curious how many classified police documents detail these activities. Anyway, essentially all I know about Revanche. However, I need to mention that the situation with the Matthew has taken a turn. Really? Could you explain? Well, according to the intel CPD just received, new faction strong enough to rival Revanche has finally surfaced. Now don't doubt that strength. 
A new faction? Surely it's not the Bracer Guild, right? For all intents and purposes, the Bracer Guild is a positive establishment. This one I'm talking about is whoever is less, so Orboros is gonna be Orgoros. You see, there's a powerful organization that operates out of Calvert's Eastern Quarter. It's already managed to worm its way in a crossbell. What? You're certain of this? Yes, previous rumors of this organization turned out to be true. I have no reason to be skeptical now. They're called Hayu. Ah, so it's like, okay, they recently, just recently, a new commercial unit registered under the name Hayu Trading Limited opened up for business in the Harbor District. Hayu, quite the Eastern name. Could potentially escalate to a brawl between the two crime syndicates. That petty fight we saw between the street gangs would be nothing compared to that. The calm before the storm, if you will. So far, neither the group has the audacity to make their struggle public. However, I would be surprised if they weren't already battling each other behind closed doors and using a variety of methods. The First Division seems to be keeping a close eye on the whole thing. The First Division? So the man with glasses who left right here when we arrived was... Yes, Detective Dudley. Dudley? Dudley? My fam's from Dudley. <laughs> They all speak like this. Anyway, uh, from the First Division, coincidentally, you know, the Americans are not going to understand that at all. Dudley is a place in the UK, in, in a place called the Black Country. And I'm like Deep South talk like this. People from Dudley speak like this. It's, uh, it's like a Brahmi accent, but just slightly octave are you? Anyway, <laughs> that's what my dad's from. Anyway, coincidentally, he was asking me questions on the same topic. A coincidence indeed. Mm. Lloyd, is there something bothering you? You went quiet all of a sudden. Let me guess, you noticed something? Yeah, I still need time to sort it all out of my head, though. Thank you very much, Mr. Grimwood. Without your help, we wouldn't have been able to find the lead we needed to put this case to bed. That's so, I'm glad of our assistance. Sergio has always been a tremendous help to me, so from a both personal and moral standpoint, I support your work 100%. If you ever run into any problems, you can always stop by my office and chat with me. Good to know. So we're seeing that there's actually four gangs operating. Two smaller gangs and then a singular, the two big gangs of the Mafia and the Hayu. So what's the next course of action? Should we go back and sort through all the information we gathered? Good idea. Before we do that, now's the time to wrap up any unfinished business we still need to take care of. Besides, if what I'm thinking is the truth behind all these incidents, let's just say we're in for a bumpy ride, alright? I appreciate the modesty, but your face has given away your confidence. Let's head back to the SSS building once we cross everything off our bucket list. Sound good? Yes, let's make haste. And I think this is probably a good place to say, if you've enjoyed this, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time when we see the true face of this operation. Peace.